our two governors, the governor of Nandi and the governor of Wazingishu, cabinet colleagues, Keter, Chelugui, Margaret, Betty, Professor Magoha, government officials, my family, my two mothers, brothers and sisters, our children. Good afternoon. Good afternoon once again. You know you should greet me with energy because today I'm strong. We haven't slept. I have never arranged a funeral in three hours. I got a call from the doctor at about two o'clock yesterday telling me that my father had been in an accident, but in the background I could hear people screaming. So something told me there's something that is not right. So I dropped his call. The first person I called is C.S. Keter, and I told him I need a chopper. I think I need to evacuate my father. Then I said, maybe Charles will not get the chopper. So I called C.S. Matiangi. I told him, C.S., I know you have police choppers. Can you please make one for me available? I need to go and evacuate my father. Then I called Judge, Justice Kimaru. I don't know whether he's here now. I told him my father is in the hospital. I don't have a car at home. Can you please go and check what's going on? And, and a, a car, yeah, ambulance is on the way. So in between, while I'm waiting for either C.S. Keter or C.S. Matiangi to provide the chopper, the judge calls me back. And he was very straight. You know, judicial officers are very straight. He says, C.S., don't bother. Dad is no more. A few minutes later, C.S. Matiangi called me back. And he told me that the chopper is now at Wilson. I didn't tell him that my father had passed away. I just went to Wilson, just the way I was. I'd just actually come from home because I took the virtual cabinet meeting at home. I'd just arrived at office in the office just before 2 p.m., just before I received that call. So I just had my handbag and a laptop. I actually didn't carry the laptop, I just carried the handbag. And I headed straight to Wilson. But in the chopper, that's when I texted C.S. McKinney and I told him, I'm sorry, C.S., my father didn't make it. I think he was in a function, so he didn't reply. He called me and I was airborne, so we, I couldn't hear him, so I told him I'll call you back. I think we got here about four or five, thereabouts. We went straight to the hospital. I found the governor and his team, the doctors. Thank you, governor. The doctors did a really good job. And I was actually pleasantly surprised by the quality offered by the hospital. You know, we've all been thinking that our county referral hospitals are not well equipped. It actually is, I'm happy to report. It was clean, and I don't think they acted up because it was an emergency, so it was very clean. They even offered tea, even though we couldn't drink because we had no appetite. So thank you very much, Governor. Dr. Kemboy, Dr. Kene, the doctor who called me, and your medical team. Thank you very much. I don't think we can offer you anything in return. As a family, we can just say thank you very much. Tears Ketel, thank you for arranging in a matter of minutes. Because I didn't have a car, I just went to Wilson and got into a, onto a plane. But when I got to the stadium, we landed at the stadium, I think your car was there and Governor's car was there. So I had choices and, and the judge was also there. So I thank you very much. I also would like to thank the Ministry of Interior, OCS Matiani because through him, the interior team was mobilized through the county commissioner. And by the time I got home, the police had taken over the place and were already arranging the funeral because I told CS that uh, my father is a Muslim. You know, our family is a very interesting family. I think you've heard names, others are called Naomi, others are called Farida, others are called Faiza. My father was an interesting man. He was a very calm way, by the way. You couldn't joke around. The, the story Naomi said was true. We could plant sweet potatoes the whole day in the hot sun, as you see how hot Nandi can be. Then he'd come back and stand at one edge and say, these lines are not very straight. And he would make us uproot those sweet potatoes and plant them all over again. And we used to think, what kind of a cruel person is this? But he taught us that there are no half measures in life. If you choose to do something, do it well. Never take less than you should take. So we would beautifully approve those uh, sweet potatoes and plant them all over again. 
And by the way, because he had come in the evening, it means we still have to wake up at four, because he he kept a lot of dairy cows. Would we were four bars at the time, because that was in the 80s. Would milk 56 cows before going to school by hand. There was no machine, and he would say, "This is your school fees." So we would milk, pack the milk. They used to be taken to the KCC, it used to do very well in those days. And then we would head off to school. The school was quite far, so we'd carry pack lunch. We'd return in the evening, we'd get home about five, and we would, uh, I don't know, do you call it dice or chop, nappy grass, because you have to feed the cows, then shower, then make dinner, then do your homework, then sleep, and wake up at four. So you can understand why we thought that my father was a cruel man. But he wasn't. I think if it wasn't for him, we would not have turned out the way we did. If he wasn't strict, and by the even polishing your shoe, it had to shine. If your uniform had two lights, you had to re-iron it. He was like a policeman. Eh? And I think that's why I'm close to Commissioner Cheran Boss. My dad was a perfectionist. He was way too perfect. You could bring a glass, he would hold it up and say, this glass is not clean. Go and wash it again. And that's where I got my particular for detail and being a perfectionist. Sometimes the staff I work with think that I'm way too much. But I am not. Why should I settle for less? If I can get A, why should I get B? And those are the values we should teach our children. I think our generation of parents has somewhat not done as well as our parents did. Because we provide everything for our children. Everything. And this is my son, Moses. I provided everything for him. Maybe I should have made him approve the sweet potatoes the way I did. But he told me one day, you know I told him in the 80s, sometimes you go to school without shoes. And he told me, but you know, mom, you're not expecting me to walk without shoes in, in the year of our Lord 2000 and something. So times have changed. Our kids are now fully digital. But I think as parents, we also have to try to maneuver a little bit. Because maybe we should hold their hands a bit more. So sometimes when you're growing up, you may think that your parents do not love you. In the community that I come from, it's very difficult, and Charles will tell you, for a man to say, I love you. So even if your, the father loved their children, they would never say it. Maybe they'll just show it by paying your fees, by making sure you're not hungry, sleeping hungry, those kinds of things. And my father would say one thing, that his work is not to look for a school. So if you failed, you didn't go to my father to say it after you left. If you didn't do well, go and look for the school, he will look for the money. That was his philosophy. And I think that that is one of the values that I took away from my father. You really must do your part. Don't expect other people to pull the weight for you when you've not done your part. So colleagues, I want to thank you very much. This was the fastest we will ever arrange. I think we did it overnight with the governor. Thank you very much, governor. Governor gave up Lilala Satisa, and then he left me with a gentleman called Victor. Victor, where are you? He's somewhere. And we were calling people up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., because the chairs you were sitting on were being mobilized like 4 a.m. The tents were putting them up at 5 a.m. That program we were editing even at 6 a.m. So you can imagine how quick, and I'm actually pleasantly surprised, Governor, that you have some quality in Kapsabet. This program we created in a cyber cafe. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Because we couldn't do anything. I mean, we would not have got to Eldred or any other place. So all the stuff you see here today comes within from Nandi County. Just a few. Governor Mandago from Wasilichu. The red chairs are from Wasilichu. So maybe Governor Sagi should invest in a few red chairs. <laughs> But suffice it to say, nobody succeeds alone. Imagine if I had been alone, my sisters were devastated. Nobody could think straight because the accident happened so suddenly. My father had been suffering from prostate cancer for a very long time. As I told you last year, he was operated four times. But can you imagine how painful it is that he wasn't killed by the cancer, but a motorcycle? And we have to speak straight. This madness has to stop. We really have to rein in on this border-border business. I believe that you can combine business 
with obedience to the law and praying within the rules. It is possible to do border border business and do it properly. And I think we should do it. Because how many more people should we lose before we act? I think it's about time. So Governor and the County Commissioner's team, I think we really must do something about this border border accident. Every hospital in Kenya has a border border wing. Why should we create space for border border accident? Why can we not deal with the problem? I think it's about time we dealt with the problem. Yes, Matiangi, to your team, I want to thank you once again. But last but not least, my sister will come and give a vote of thanks, but I don't want to underestimate the support that was given to my family, our family, by the government through His Excellency the President. He called me yesterday after he had the news, and he told me, Farida, don't worry, the funeral will happen, because I told him, by the way, boss, this funeral is tomorrow. It was worth speaking at about seven. And he, was, he said, tomorrow I said, yes, my dad is a Muslim, so it has to happen tomorrow. That time I'm driving now from the hospital to the house, and we actually don't know where to start. We get home, there was nobody at home, so there's no food, you're hungry. You know what happens in a funeral. So I really want to thank everybody that took part in making sure that we pull together a decent send for my father in just a few hours. I want to thank you very much. My sister will still come and give the word of thanks, our service providers, Edna and your team, who were calling you, I think it was 4 a.m., and asking where are the trucks, where are the chairs, where are the tents, and it's 4 a.m. And surprisingly, they were all awake. So Kenyans don't actually sleep. They go looking out for money. Because had they been asleep, maybe you would have been sitting on the grass. Because we are mobilizing like right until 8 a.m. I think when Mungaru got here, at around 8, we were still arranging the chairs. I told him, guy, take a walk. We don't even have chairs to sit on. <laughs> so it's, it was that quick. So I really appreciate everybody's support. And I want to say thank you very much for coming, everybody. There's another team, by the way, on the other side. We've had to separate the teams because of COVID regulations. So we have a similar setup on the other side of the house. They are listening through television. And I want to thank everybody for coming and for being there for our family. Thank you very much and thank you for your attention.